Welcome to another episode of Hooks, Nits, and Dice. I'm Leela Croca. This is Tommy. You guys know Tommy. Hello. Hello. I gotta put my glasses on so I can be reading because my head is hurting, which means I need to get my glasses on. Um, <clears throat> Tommy's with me today because there are some things that he remembered that I need to talk about, but I don't remember the specifics, so he's gonna help me out. One of them being he started playing Warhammer again. Warhammer 20,000. Thank you. And uh, he's got some minis that he purchased. He had a whole bunch of minis from back in the day, and they have disappeared. So he, tell us about that. Well, <coughs> kind of said what it was. So it's uh, I know it's some uh, Warhammer Fantasy minis, uh, Lizard Beat, so they're not sold anymore. Uh, and some Tyranids from Warhammer Four Thousand. And after moving a couple of times. No idea where they went. Lovely. Yeah, I have some paintings and stuff too. Yeah, well, so he's gotten back into that. He purchased some, and I have paint, and he's got the glue, and together we'll put his minis together. We're also going to paint those Dungeons and Doggies miniatures, at least one package of them. He has two packs, one of them leaving them unopened. And uh, let's see. Thursday, we started making characters for Shadowrun, correct? Yes, <coughs> though we are not strictly speaking playing Shadowrun. Okay. We are playing a adaptation of Shadowrun into a system called Fate Core, which is a narrative-driven, uh, player-driven uh, rules, kind of like a uh, role-playing system that basically just focuses on um, character traits or as they call them aspects uh, and skills there's no like the back modifier <coughs> and it's all no like math and there's dice rolls and stuff yeah the, the you roll four dice and you can either get a plus one or a minus one or a zero on each of the dice so at most you're adding together like four numbers so you're using proprietary dice. Yes, you can use a uh, d6 and have just one and two be minus and five and six be plus and three, uh, three and four be zero. Um, and uh, you add that to your skill, which can be from anywhere from plus, uh, plus zero to like, I think it maxes out or like plus five or six. It's six, I think it's the highest. You could potentially go above that kind of caps out at like plus eight or nine total with the roll and everything so okay <coughs> no large numbers <laughs> right so uh so yeah we we got a ways at least with some of our people yeah most making of you their characters pretty much finished with your character it also uses a a um interesting system called fate coins or fate points uh, every character gets a certain amount, depending on how they, you build your character. You get between, I think everyone started with nine, and you can use them to buy um, gear, feats, and, and, and well not feats, stunts, as we call it in this uh, in game. Uh, and um, you can use those to, like, say, uh, I'm, I'm like super interested in shiny stuff. So <laughs> maybe that's one of your traits for your character. So it fits like, oh, there's, um, I'm, um, they're, they're guarding, you know, the, the, the opponents are guarding shiny stuff, so you, you would say, I'm going to spend a fate point and uh, invoke or use my uh, super interested in shiny stuff and uh, to get a plus two to your, my roll or to re-roll my dice, uh, things like that. And you, you get those points back at the start of every session. Uh, however... I, as a DM, can also say, oh, you're, you're uh, trying to speak to this uh, high noble person or whatever, uh, uh, this super important businessman, because futuristic thing. Um, and uh, you 
see you there's some shiny stuff over there, so you're distracted, so I will give you a fate coin and you will take some sort of disadvantage or there's something bad happened to you because of this uh, part of your character trait. So it's a each of the, the traits can be used by <coughs> you for something positive or by me to create some drama basically or yeah. uh, make things a little more difficult for you. Yeah. Okay then. <laughs> so that was Thursday. Uh, yep. We we had that TPK, so we're doing Shadow Run now instead of Pathfinder for the time being. Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm still gonna look into starting a Vampire the Masquerade game. Got me some vampire dice. Got my Core Rule book. I used to have the Bruja Clan book, but I had to leave it in the states. Sad, Corey. Anyway, um, Sunday, our group finished our dungeon crawl successfully. Uh, no more party members died. You might recall that one of them uh, got in a tangle with my character's niece and <laughs> ended up dying as a result. So, um, let's see. It was a close call for Greg. Yeah, really was. Greg being the goblin that can disguise himself as a halfling. Yep. Yeah, making sure I said that right. <laughs> but we all survived and... Got some pretty good loot. Um, it was a fun encounter. It wasn't your average encounter. We had a room with a protective circle of runes in it. So I'm like, everybody stand on a rune. Uh, and the room began to heat up, but, excuse me, around us. But as long as we were standing on those runes, we were protected. So there were a few times where I made some key calls that pretty much saved our bacon. <laughs> so I was pretty pleased with that. Um, of course, we're going to have our bowling next week, this weekend, I should say, on the 24th. That's going to be exciting. It's going to be a birthday bowling bash. So we'll have cake, we're going to have a pinata, and we're going to go bowling. It's going to be lots of fun. And I found out a lot of our friends love to sing. So we're going to have a karaoke night sometimes, and that's going to be awesome. Be uh, on the lookout for that. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else that you need to be here for? Uh, did you want to talk about your guys' plans for... Oh yeah, so the reason we were in the dungeon crawl is to capture some bad guys who were running a charlatan uh, business and they left the business when they died, so of course we took it over. We put a talking mimic in charge of it, a chest, a treasure chest, named Chester. I did not name him. <laughs> I did. <laughs> But yeah, so Chester's going to be in charge because, hey, security and management works for me. And then uh, we'll be getting a 30% cut of the store's profits every month. So that'll be awesome. Uh, anything else? Mm, I don't think so. Okay. Tommy's going to go on his walk. <laughs> um, I've got to hurry up and get uh, HCAD finished so I can upload it so you guys can watch it so you can join me for the after show. But I have a few more things to show you. Uh, one of them being Stan got me a plastic pumpkin which I carved the top off of, and it's kind of hard to see because it's black, but it looks like a chute, that you're going down a chute because you can see the inside is open like that. It's, uh, <clears throat> it was just a plain pumpkin that was purple, and I painted some possibly familiar imagery on it. <laughs> you know. For those of you that don't know, it's Nightmare Before Christmas stuff, and the pumpkin lights up. Turn it towards the screen. There we go. So because it lights up in the center, I'm going to use our 3D printer <clears throat> and make the scene where Oogie Boogie is about to cook up Sally and Santa. I'm going to print out the torture devices, etc. But then I will make probably make the figurines out of polymer clay just because it's easier. I'm just getting into 3D printing, so basic shapes are okay, but the complicated stuff I'm going to have to probably do in, in uh, polymer clay, which is fine. I can 3D print them later if I decide to do that, but it's going to look awesome. It's already looking awesome, so I'm pretty excited about that. Tommy did the um, <clears throat> breast cancer awareness marathon. He walked, didn't run. But he got this cool bag and he gave it to me and he got a medal and he got some balloons. It was kind of cool. I wanted to show you guys that I got 
liquid latex today. It's not the big bottle that I had in the States, but it's better than nothing. <clears throat> and then these were on sale. They're um, little push pins, but they're golden roses. I'm going to find a perfect use for those. They were 10 kroners per pack, so I was like, why not? <clears throat> Sorry, I'm froggy. I just had dinner. And then they had flocked roses, so it's got that velvety look to them, except they missed some portions of the roses, and they look really weird because it's this weird gray fabric that's really plain. So I'm probably going to glitter the edges that didn't get flocked, but it's kind of pretty. I like it. I have another that's just plain. It doesn't have the flocking, but so I'll be using them for photo shoots and things like that. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up because we can talk more during the after show. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.